don't need bigger knife. Yeah. Greetings once again. Um, hopefully you can hear us this time. We are back again on this evening here. A little bit late because we were waiting for this fella here to join in, which he has finally made it back into town after a hiking trip today. I'm here. I'm here. Yay! Oh, yay. Hey, what's going on, man? Adventure yep. and a half. Adventure and a half. I don't even have socks no. on right now. They're like... <laughs> they're <laughs> three, like... Excellent. Well, before you get far, my too first far year. That, Sorry. Excellent. Before we get far, too far into that, we'll get onto the pocket dumps. Uh, myself here, I was carrying the bail out today. Mr. Oh, yeah. Robot. Nice little reprofile tip I did there. What was that? I said Mr. Roboto. Oh. Getting a little I'm going all weird, am I? A little bit. Yeah, it went just for a cool. second. Fair enough. Yeah, it was connecting back to the Wi Fi. Uh, back yeah. in, apparently. Not just just having some minor technical difficulties, but he hasn't like dropped out of the call yet, so here's hoping he can stick around. Yeah. Yeah. I blame Dennis. It's Dennis's fault. Well Way to you go, know, Dennis. I did I did have to come into the call, so that fourth person is probably glitching everything out now, I'm sure. That's the reason. Indeed. Um this week I'm carrying my uh benchmade fact, cause it's awesome. And that's all you need to know about that. Terrible. Yay, I'm back again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm back with my native Vive. I'm still not tired of this thing. The S90V is stupid. It holds an edge like few other knives I've owned. It is fantastic. And I was on the side of the mountain for the large majority of the day, so I was carrying my Magnum Fox River. Nice. From Park River. So, yeah. It's the right choice. I said it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty as hell. I got some good shots. The Instagram knife nerdery continues on the side of the mountain. So, yeah. It's the right choice. Excellent. It's Excellent. literally still on my hip. I haven't taken it off my belt. I just like ran in and like turned the shit on. Like, yeah, so. Excellent. It's a quick shout out to uh, Justin and Mr. Fisk. What's going on, guys? What are you guys carrying tonight? Twice. Also, Mr. Fisk wants to know where's the cat? <laughs> Around. That's eating food because no one else was home and I was supposed to be home an oh. hour ago. So she was starving. By the time yeah. I know. <laughs> so she's definitely eating food right now. Yeah. That yeah. is funny. And uh, just to let Fisk and Justin know, they're going to have to banter amongst themselves because Darren's not going to be able to make it tonight. Uh, yeah, he's he's not feeling well. So uh, wish him the best. Hopefully, hopefully he, he feels better. Mm-hmm. Cheers that to him. <laughs> Oh, um, this beer! This beer is going down way too easy after I just hiked. Like it was 14k after it was all said and done. Jesus nice. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah. That is seeming a little sloppy. Oh, it's just delicious. It's just delicious. <laughs> um. So we had originally planned before we had a few uh, technical <laughs> difficulties and stuff like that. We were talk planning on waffling about a knife before you showed up. Um. And that is a new traditional that I just saw recently on the Instagrams, the GTC 35, the beer and sausage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar. I'm just did popping. you say GTC? I, I probably did. I've been saying that all night. Okay. GEC. Okay. That's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little, though. Let's see uh, this guy here. I just popped it up for our viewers to see. But yeah, it's got a comb, it's got a fork, it's got a bottle opener, and it's got a knife. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a hipster's yep. wet dream, but you know. That's kind good. of. I'm kind of questioning <laughs> the fork-beard comb combo. <laughs> Hygienically? Yeah. See, it's... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, I, guys. I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't think it's actually a comb. It does say bar tool right on it, but I have no idea what you would use a comb for in a bar. Aside from 
combing. So I, I, I must be missing Besting. out. <laughs> I had seen Maybe. an image that actually like named each part. Okay. Yeah. If you can find it, that out, I'm pretty sure it was beard comb. Like poking really? the sausage with the prongs. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. It's the blades are spear, fork, and B R R T. Beard refu beard refuse removal refuse. tool. That's what they call it. There you go. That's from the GEC website. I see. I see. Okay. So they're <laughs> expecting you to get food in all up in there. Right. So well, it's because you're sausage. It's it's a thing that happens. Okay. You have a long yeah. enough beard, food falls in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. What do you mean sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, occasionally, like with every meal. <laughs> yeah, not only. Anyway, I think it's a stretch. I think it's a stretch on that one. I'm not. I'm not down with the fork beard comb combo. Oh, I haven't thought about think. it till you mentioned. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I can't see myself ever using the comb or the the fork, so it doesn't really bother me. Hmm. It's a bottle opener as well on that tool, so I can. It's. It still has I've, tried, I've tried to use metal combs on my beard, and it doesn't matter how well they're chamfered. Metal combs just kind of suck for they, the most part. Like, I don't know. They need to be really heavily thrummed. Like, y you got to make sure, yeah, those edges need to be taken right down, and it's got to be polished. Um, yeah, they get kind of pinchy. And by kind of, I mean really pinchy. And I don't mean occasionally. I mean, like, every time I've ever tried. Man, this exposure sucks. <laughs> How's it I, think going, you just, I think you should just go back to the like space behind you like you had at the first episode oh yeah i forgot i could do that <laughs> don't don't do those things it's too late, it's too <laughs> late. <laughs> why did you remind him oh um, just a quick aside mr fisk is saying that he fidgeted with the Oz Roosevelt, the Hinderer Fire Attack, Sabenza Starbenza, HK Access, all while watching football today. Mm -hmm. So those are his carry die. Okay. The Starbenza is pretty nice. It's pretty mm -hmm. nice. That's mm -hmm. the one that I'd want if I could get it, but I'm Canadian. Yeah. The Roosevelt looks pretty nice too, to be honest. Um, also are you back, Joe? Are you done? I never, how was the interstellar I never dimensional left. travel? It, it was good. That's the I mind never fuck. left. <laughs> That's the mind fuck. He, he was gone. Um, <laughs> and Justin says, it's not a beard comb. It's a comb for, well, and I, it just trails off into dots. And I don't know exactly where he's going with that. I don't think he knows oh where he's going with it. Oh, is he a doctor? Seriously. <laughs> what he said um oh. but yeah the gtc it looks good i G want it ec man you no. said it again <laughs> is well, it is nothing like a gtc thank god not that <laughs> i dislike g that's <laughs> like can you imagine what a slip joint made by gtc would look like no. Do you want no, to I don't imagine want to that? Think about those <laughs> exactly. You know what you do oh. want to think about, Dennis? You, you you want to think about one of these guys? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's pretty. You made you you made me think about one of these guys enough that I got one. So, you know. <laughs> nice, nice. So that's the right decision. <laughs> it's not the wrong decision. It's the nicest native. Um. In that, like. The standard native platform yeah for sure also mr fisk is saying that they meant pubic lace look, so look uh, what's there he's a cat <laughs> so cute a very full cat she's okay she's okay there there's a cat <laughs> are you really satisfied <laughs> Are you yeah, not she's entertained? Not she's not happy. <laughs> oh, no. Not happy she had to wait for her food or... <laughs> yeah, probably. No, me, me putting her up to the camera like she's a show dog. Like... <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What's going on, Zinks? How you doing tonight, brother? Hey, buddy. And uh, Mr. Fisk is saying, give that cat its own damn square. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no way. Don't make me spit out my coffee. You, I need that you coffee. <laughs> They're shit. Like, seriously. She does <laughs> definitely does not deserve the square on the <laughs> stage. <laughs> Uh, her knife knowledge is as subpar garbage it's garbage she has terrible True. opinions <laughs> but damn does she have opinions she is an opinionated cat for sure yeah. um hey Zinx what are you carrying tonight I forgot to ask that question before uh yeah. I guess we should probably go on to questions yeah or Justin wants to un- unsubscribe and go and watch the Cats podcast. You don't. It's all freaking. It's all. Righty. It's all fascist propaganda. Don't. You don't. Don't get sucked into it. There you go. Pretty much, it's just a giant hairball in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> that somehow each episode goes on for twenty minutes. <laughs> I've heard that Mister Fisk is into that kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. He unsubscribed, so <laughs> so it doesn't matter. For the, for the record, the cat's not even in the same room anymore. So I she, mean, yeah, she's that disgusted. Fantastic. <laughs> she got the help out, but there still is a cat, so it's okay. And Zinc's carrying the uh, mini bull mastiff tonight, which is yeah, brother. I've been seeing those pictures on Instagram. It's pretty nice. It's pretty mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Mr. Fisk said kitty porn, which I'm not sure is the thing that he thinks that it is. It's not a it's not a And it's not a thing research. we're going to get into. Don't, don't Google it. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on whether it's with, honestly, it doesn't matter, but whether it's with T's <laughs> or whether it's with D's. And either way, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Pretty sure you'd get charged in either case. <laughs> So, first question of the night. <laughs> yeah. Why are yeah. we doing? Why are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what finger do you spidey flick your knives with? The the answers. It was a poll, so there's only two answers. Was the middle finger, which is the middle finger, <laughs> or the wrong finger? And. It hurts my feelings that 26% of people said the wrong finger. 26%. So 74% got it right. Congratulations. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it was a 26 to 9 difference. (laughs) Which 9 just seems like a lot. I was genuinely expecting to get Justin. As the only guy. <laughs> See, I, I think it honestly depends on the size of the knife. Um, the the only finger that it feels comf- the only this is the knife where it feels comfortable to do with a, like an index flick because it's that large. It's the military, but on every other Spyderco I own, it's a middle flink. It's a middle finger. I I genuinely can't even like comprehend the the motion no that won't work i need i need leverage on both sides of the knife i needs it um but yeah justin wasn't the only person um we the the first name that i that came across was ahsoka ahsoka edge and i asked him in a private message why he used which finger he used and why and he said the index finger. And it just, for him, it just happened to reach the closest. And he actually sent me a video of him flicking open a knife. And I was like, I mean, it seems to work for you for sure, right? But it's wrong. It's like writing with your yeah. left hand. It should be beating it, beaten out of you as a child. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes. <laughs> See, Dennis, Dennis is trying to be polite you about it. You end up with but... 38-year-old end products. So being, being... <laughs> well, I was just going to say, Dennis you is trying to... You yourself an end product? <laughs> yeah. This oh, is... yeah, there's there's no more evolving. This, this, is, the end. this is his For final sure. This is his final form. 
<laughs> made it sound like he's like pink slime or something like that. Uh, you know. Basically, what you're saying is it should have been hitting you harder. Is uh... Indeed. <laughs> Taught you better. <laughs> so what about what about you guys? How do you uh, or do you Spidey flick? I don't know about Nigel, but I'm pretty sure Dennis does. Or more answers still. Oh, I well, thought we were just going over that. Just, yes, it was just a poll. Um, I guess other people of note <laughs> is yeah. Ben Ping. Uh, he's often in our group chat or in our uh, video chat, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word. Kiefer also, <laughs> nice collie. Ahsoka, like I said. And yeah. Uh, even actually, uh, everyday Caleb, the gentleman that lent us the uh, SE cleaver for one of our like early videos that we did, uh, all apparently flick with their index finger. I would assume that that's the only finger that people flick with. They're not randomly flicking knives open with their ring finger like like monsters. That's not. <laughs> right. uh. Doesn't quite work. Like yeah, me, me and Joe both put the knife in the same grip. <laughs> I can I still middle middle I, finger for that too. I can open it in reverse, but I can't like flick it. Maybe if it wasn't a liner lock. I hate it. So tonight it. I'm gonna slice my hand open on a spider co. That's... Yay. Don't you say yay. <laughs> I can't. I have to do it as a righty if I'm yeah. going to reverse grip the sleech. It's not an ambidextrous. Oh yeah, no, that doesn't count. Anyway, anyway. Yay! Look, I want you to know, I'm saying this. Me, the guy that likes to lighter open his knives. You're opening your knives wrong, both of you. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you saw me playing with this thing yesterday. There you go. Yeah, when it comes to closing oh, my no, knives. Not at all. No, show it on camera. Let's get you live on here <laughs> taking a knuckle off. What do you mean take so, a knuckle off? Joe, walk back with the the lock there, and I'm grabbing the pocket clip with my index fingers. Yeah, you sure are. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, no, no. That's that's the that's that's the way to do it. Here, monsters. Are you actually, using your thumb still? Uh, no, I actually use my index, and then yeah, keep it pinched. The thumb. Oh no! Fuck that. <laughs> that. That's how. That's how Joseph throws a knife into his laptop. I'm not doing that. Uh, no, if I if I throw with my thumb, honestly, it's like this. I just let it bounce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let it. But I do. And that. That's how I normally do lockbacks. But I started playing with it last night, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take the second knuckle, like the back of my finger, off one day doing it because it's it's really close but yeah keeping my eyes open for band-aids it's fine at least i'll have a real scar to show off the camera instead of all this fake bullshit that keeps on going on every week (laughs) oh scars on that note it's time for beer (laughs) it's not the wrong answer um so that was the poll that was a no, Mr. Fisk, I can't check my DMs. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm doing things right now. It's important. He's sending you more dick pics. God damn it. <laughs> Stop kitty it. Kitty porn. It's just kitty porn. That's all it's it a video, so I hope not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's one of those ones that deletes itself after the first time he runs it. Liability sake. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Now I'm just sad. <laughs> Good. Just, oh. <laughs> that's the right answer, I guess. So what about you, Nigel? But yes, the index finger is a little bit weird. I think it is. Being middle on finger. topic again. Middle finger. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I mean, with a lot of risk. Proper. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Justin's trying to claim that, that that it is the correct answer, and nah. Nope. The, the poll will prove you wrong. <laughs> well, it's one in four, right? Like, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. Still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree. I agree with you. 
It's, it's <laughs> totally wrong. More people do it wrong question. than there are lefties. I yeah. Percentage. I was just thinking that too. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's they're less wrong than you. Think about that. What's this now? I'm not, <laughs> not going to think about that. No. <laughs> Sounds like something I'd have to think a little bit too hard about. <laughs> yeah. No. Doesn't mean that that mean that they're more wrong. They're 26, 25, whatever it was percent. No, because I mean, if we're 75 percent and we're correct, the higher the percentage, the more correct you would be. I don't. In the thought that I had in my head, which makes absolutely no sense when you say. But if you're 50 percent wrong and only 17 percent left, does that mean you're more wrong than you are left? I know it's not 50 here, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> if we're going to use made up statistics. <laughs> like... I mean, like Justin says just now, 50% of the time, it works every time, okay? I think it was supposed <laughs> to be 60% of the time, though. Listen here, Steel Panther. <laughs> Is that directed at me or Justin? Yeah. <laughs> You guys can figure that out. <laughs> I'm giving that one to him. That one's his. He can have it. Just keep that. Um, More questions. I was say, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't much uh, discussion on the first question. No. It was pretty much a matter of fact statement going on there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Kind of gave my thoughts on that. I, I just don't think you get enough purchase on most knives to be able to do it with, with your index finger. And if you're not using it your middle finger, then, like, no. Just no. I do Here's like also Here's a follow-up question. question. Here's a follow-up question just for the guys who are live as well as for yourselves. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer, a spidey flick or a thumb stud pop? Depends on the knife. I usually thumb stud, yeah, like a thumb either. pop. I I like it. I thumb. also agree. I also agree. It's more satisfying for a thumb stud pop than it is a spidey flick. Does it count? If You're it's using a hole? the N90 native with a lock back as your good example. Like, no, 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 no. Here with a tech note. This is still in my hand. Uh, actually, well, here, here's a satisfying. The tie light. That's always fun to pop open. So I'm going to be modifying my tie light this week because that looks just too damn good. It's a fun modification. You should sand the blade too. I'm going to redo mine. I messed up, but I came close. So apparently uh, Zinx's Spidey flicks his girlfriend's thumb studs. And I assume that's a euphemism for something. Giggity, giggity. Does he do it with the middle finger, though? Yeah. That's the question. Is it, uh, <laughs> middle finger and thumb. No. Don't think about it too hard. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> too late. BB in chat. Hey, boys. Hope all is well. Your corner of the crazy world. It is. Good day, Brandon. What's going on, brother? Hey, brother. What are you carrying tonight, brother? There was a, lo there was a lot of brothers there. <laughs> there sure was. <laughs> I just wasn't going to say it. I was hiking with my two brothers. So maybe we'll post a picture of that, you know, by Tuesday. <laughs> just round out the brotherhood. Just have Hulk Hogan just superimposed over my face as I say it. Yeah, brother. Brother, 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 brother. brother. Don't like that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. As we're talking about it, Hulk Hogan has entered the chat. Terrifying. Thanks, Mr. Chris. Appreciate that. <laughs> Does that mean he's subscribing again? <laughs> <laughs> it must. He's back. He's been in my DMs, so I assume he's back, right? Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> Brandon saying, Netflix and getting ready for Monday. Dot, dot, dot. Brother. That's so harsh, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Kitty cat. Monday's my day off, brother. <laughs> Kitty brother. <laughs> Two beans. Two beans. 
Go beans. <laughs> beans. <laughs> It's like no, no. She needs to hide for a minute here. It's it's fine. She's embarrassed now. (laughs) Indeed. On that note, what folding knife do you think is overrated? Was the question. Um, It's going to come up, obviously, but there's one answer that comes up more than once. And I'm curious if you guys can guess it before we even get to it. I already guessed it this morning, so I'll leave it to these two. I'm I'm gonna guess it right now that it's a Sabenza. No. Two. <laughs> huh? PM two. Boom. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yep. Um <laughs> apparently uh, Mr. Fisk is uns unsubscribing again but with an x randomly in the middle of the word for some reason because okay. it was next to the c on the keyboard and he had to type it really quick because dennis made a comment against the yeah, yeah. so best, the best part <laughs> is, is that i've ordered a sabenza for myself like i'm finally getting it that's happening year, now so I mean, nice yeah yeah, well, yeah. Now you're getting the 31 right so you're already on like the naughty list as far as well. Knows, okay, so find me a 21 with a dual thumb stud that's not the same amount that I would be paying for a new 31 because I run a knife store. <laughs> like mathematics, my friend. If you can find me that same price, <laughs> then I'm willing to do it. But I don't. You'll be able to find me that same price. I do like and... the, the smoothness out of box on the 31s. I gotta say they're. Justin is claiming that his answer for the next question is Chris Reeves, which is this question. I don't is agree he with that. All Chris Reeves knives. Overrated? Yeah, which is he's I, wrong. No, there's some crazy hype, like ridiculous amount of hype. I will give you that. There are the Mr. Fisks of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing, though. Like, the Sabenza, I don't know if it's the most overrated knife in the world. I think the PM2, I also don't think it's the most overrated. I don't know what the most overrated is. But I think they both have very, very valid points for why they're as popular as they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, honestly, my answer to this would have been the PM2 as well. Just specifically thinking about the mass cult following that it has online but it is one of the few modern mass produ- mass produced pocket knives that you can find in almost any steel almost any handle configuration and color blade coated or not it's pretty ubiquitous it's not terribly expensive for what it is um but it's not it's not going to do it for everyone and i see oftentimes people are like hey i'm getting into spider co and i'm looking to spend X amount of dollars. I want a decent, at least a decent Spider Co. What should I get? PM2 was always one of the first recommended knives, and I don't think it necessarily should be. Um, well, and odds are they're gonna like it because there's a more pro things about the PM2 for the masses than there is con things. Yeah. So a PM2 yeah. is a safe bet to give someone who's looking at Spider Co knives in general because if you're already looking at Spider Co knives. It's not the worst. That would be the one. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that I really like about the PM2 on paper, but there's, I still don't own one. That being said, that that S45 variant with the green 3D machine handles, that thing actually felt ridiculously nice in hand. So if I get the chance, that might be something I'd look at. But that was like a one in a what, a 30 or one in a 40, all the PM2s I've handled from either customers or stuff that's come through the shop over the years. It's just not something that's interesting to me. And I find it weird saying that because I'd like almost every Spyderco, regardless of how hideous or grotesque it is in hand. Uh, I don't know. I just... I think think for me, I think for Hyped is so many people think 
because of the military and the name and the basis of the design that it's going to be tough and beefy and strong and no it's a slicey slicey knife and it's not a like it's still a workhorse of a knife but it's nothing like the Adamas. it's not yeah. a, or anything like that yeah it's a cutting machine. It's not your folding pry bar. It's not something that you yeah. can just – you can't just mercilessly beat on that knife. It's relatively thin behind the edge, and it's not like mm-hmm. – you know, it, it's not the most – now, that being said, yeah, sure, you can find them in M4. You can find them in all kinds of different steels, but you better be able to buy them when they appear from those exclusive dealers because they don't last long. There, there's guys who have made careers out of collecting PM2s. Mm-hmm. I will say this, though. The S110 is not a good digging tool. <laughs> no, <laughs> I wouldn't imagine. It, it, it does not work out well. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, I'm... as far as the, the military aspect of why it got its name, it wasn't for the survival aspect as far as getting resources and stuff like that. It was for the survival aspect of keeping your life. Yeah. And the other thing yeah. to consider, too, Yes, flat slabs of G10 are generally the norm when it comes to pocket knives, but like this, yeah, it's an older military, but this is the Spyderco military, and the handles have remained roughly unchanged. And my complaint about this is the same complaint I have about the PM2. There is no real like heavy chamfering in any meaningful position on this knife. The idea is that the knife is going to stay in your hand and not rotate as you're using it to defend your life or use it as a... And, you know, to open up a crate or whatever you have to do, it's not going to shift around. But it's not the most comfortable thing either. And if somebody just wants a knife to be comfortable because they're going to be sitting there cutting cardboard boxes open all day, maybe fidgeting with their knife, I still don't think the PM2 handle is the most comfortable thing in the world. And, uh, yeah, that I think it is overrated. It's for heavy duty for heavy duty use maybe but for light duty like as far as that finger choil and the thumb wrap goes that does give you a really nice purchase to be able to do a lot it, it of indexes stuff. very well yes yeah, it does for sure the, yeah, the yeah. indexing is so good that you can take all of the grip off of the G10 scales and polish it out completely and there's never been a worry in my mind about that knife slipping in my hand it mm-hmm. locks in so well when you pick it up that it's just a non issue And maybe, maybe I am so, a little okay, bit too Okay, picky, so hang on, hang, on a, hang on a sec. We've talked about a PM2 for a while, but the actual question itself was which one? And there's how many answers of other knives other than the PM2? Oh, plenty. There's, there's it plenty. was just the, the most, most given answer, yeah. which is why we were spending time on it. Yeah. How, many, out of, how many people answered the poll? How many people said PM2? Uh, one, two... Three, four, five. Five out of two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So thirty okay, percent. So third. Third. One yeah. third of the people said the PM two was overrated. Well, that's, yeah. pretty, that's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Did um, a, a quick aside. Um, Zinc CDC is saying that he would like to see. Uh, I can't wait to see Nigel's Hornet Nest um project yeah which yeah yeah i'm i'm excited by the prospect of that i noticed it out of my shed today and it's like almost as big as my head and i'm definitely going to wait till winter rolls in a bit so they get killed off and less risk to myself before i try to collect it this is the time where i wish nigel had a rat one and a rat two to put next to his head for size reference <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a Delica. Uh, yeah. Um, and also, Mr. Fisk, yay, now you can snap the tip off your knife in Super Steel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. Right. Out of curiosity, um, on that poll, did anybody else, uh, did anybody nominate the bug out? Because I know I believe they did. We'll get there. Okay. Just because I know that there's been some hate over the handles specifically, but. Indeed. The first one actually surprised me because I've handled one of these and the one that I handled was beautiful. Like absolutely um, on par, I would say, with stuff that I've handled from Grimsbo. The Holt Spectre. Yeah. That's a gorgeous knife, though. So, 
now they exist in a variety of different price ranges. And from what I understand, you can pay to make your knife fancier and fancier and crazier. So let's consider the base model. Do you know what they what those things run for? No idea. I've wanted to. I've s- never looked into the idea of even wanting to try and buy one because it would make me sad. Because <laughs> you couldn't get it. Yeah. It's like looking at a Grimsmo. It's like, oh, those are cool. Hi, <laughs> hi. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just looking at their website quickly to see if they have. Uh... Uh, Mr. Fisk is saying they start at 785, and I'm assuming he okay. means uh, US. So that sounds about right. Eagle I was like, dollars. I... <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at like a G note, maybe 1,100 bucks Canadian. Yeah, I mean that's still cheaper than a Grimsmo. Uh, sure. I, I guess I did make that comparison. Yeah, that's fair. It's like <laughs> not quite half the price of a Grimsmo, but you're getting there. Yeah. I don't know. Every but, every video I've ever seen detailing those things, um, they seem to be exceptionally well built knives. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think after a certain point, you're just paying. Yeah, you, you, you're paying for bells and whistle. You're paying for a brand name. Uh, you're doing that when you buy a Sabenza. Like there's yeah a lot of things that after you hit a certain point, the knife doesn't get better. It just gets more expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it might get more beautiful in your eye, but it's not function wise. It's not going to be any another any of a better performing knife than anything else in your collection. And in most cases, it probably performs not as good because they tend not to use you know m4 and things like that a lot of the time a lot of them are using rwl34 because it polishes up and looks so pretty which is what you want in a Mm -hmm. knife that is a piece of art like that right well compare and contrast to something like like the open like an open l with carbon steel it's going to outcut most of the high-end uh customs and mid techs on the market today but it's a twelve dollar or thirty dollar whatever wood handled, very cheaply made knife. It's a totally different world, I think. Yeah, no, exactly. Come to think um, of it, yeah, well, yeah. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say I can't I can't think of too many other high end like really high end production knives that uh, use blade stock that thin on a regular basis. That are modern knives, I should say, instead of traditionals. I was going to say, the only one, GEC, Queen, all the traditional makers are outside of that. Yeah. Mm. On that note, uh, given PMW said, anything from cold steel, which is just hurtful. (laughs) But that being said, having seen their marketing, I agree on 100%. As much as I love their products, they are completely overhyped. There's a certain flavor to go with cold steel. And for some mm. people, it's spicy. For some people, it's bitter. I'm just saying. That, 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 I guess. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Ahsoka just jumped in the chat. What's up, pokey folks? Kind of in, kind of out today. How you doing? We're doing good, brother. How you not doing? Bad, bad. What are you carrying today? Yeah, with the uh, Cold Steel stuff, I find it's based on people's expectations. Because they see even see how tough they are and expect it to hold the sharpness and stuff like that. And then they buy the like $30 Tanto light and are wondering why it feels cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that. Um, I will say they're less overrated now because they're starting to use some really nice steels in Mm -hmm. some of their like cheaper knives. Um, Yeah. XHP for a while. Yep. XHP indeed. (laughs) This was my cold steel close at hand. So (laughs) nice. How's the sharpness? Shite. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I know it is. (laughs) But it'll cut pizza just fine. So (laughs) any of my tactical pizza cutting. Can you really call that cutting? Go to. <laughs> and yes, that was just right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not as prevalent in other places, I don't think, 
but I uh, there's a pretty strong community of fanboys on Blade forums specifically uh, that are all just totally hard up for cold steels, and mm-hmm. they'll sing the praises till you know till the end of time. And again, not that there's anything particularly wrong with any given cold steel knife, but there is definitely a fanboy tradition there for they sure. They did chin up with that sword, man. Pretty much. But you can do some really impressive stuff with cold steel products, but I mean, it's not like there aren't other companies that produce stuff that's ridiculously tough, right? So that's it. Well, and I, be, I think the big thing with their pocket knives too is just like the whole like still just hanging weights to prove their point, and it's just like it's so redundant at this point. Yeah, you're just like yeah. yeah. Anyone who's an actual knife guy knows there's more to like lock strength. Like there's so much yeah. more to the science of it's like they're the kid. Yeah, it's like they're the kid on the playground that's still playing King of the Castle and shouting from the top that yeah I'm the king and everyone else is off playing soccer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah yeah we get the point we're doing something else now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your your lock is gone. Yeah yeah, <laughs> that's it. And on that side of things, there's definitely that, but. Joe held his up. The uh, the Broken Skull is one hell of a freaking good knife. They got that edge geometry just right. Mm-hmm. It is. She's a slicey mother. You know what I mean? Um, With a name but, like Broken Skull, though, I mean, it certainly puts a different image in mind. And you've got Steve Austin cracking open beer bottles, like champagne mm-hmm. style with it, right? That's your marketing for this knife. Yeah. So, Which is no, he likes Did he they actually the a beer bottle with his broken skull. Yeah, yeah, you bet he did. That makes so so on a, it, yeah. On a random aside, but connected because of the sabering thing, I saw a clip the other day of opening up a restaurant and they had like this, like one of the magnum sized champagne bottles. It was like eight grand. Yeah, and someone was holding it while the other guy was trying to saber it and like did a few tries and can do it, and then he just starts hacking at it. Oh, and like just hacks the. T- One, two, three. Oh. oh. <laughs> it was good. Did Didn't the guy end up dropping the bottle? Oh, it exploded in his hands. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All of a sudden, you just don't have fingers anymore? Yeah. But, Ugh. Yes. So that was the marketing behind the Broken Skull. So regardless of blade geometry or steel quality or whatever, you're trying to sell it with Stone Cold backing it up. So mm-hmm. anyone who would in- appreciate the science of the actual knife itself. Which <laughs> really is uh, yeah. such a shame. Because, I mean, for the money, this thing, even with the S35 that they changed it to, it kicks the shit out of the Endura from 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 mm-hmm. uh, from Spyderco. And previously, that was my favorite lockback in that size. So it's like, they I don't know. I, I feel like they really missed a boat there. But I don't they know. They could have gone for the guys that love their Buck 110 and just been like, hey, it's a Buck 110 that doesn't weigh a pound and a half. Yeah, I mean, Buck does have the slim models with the thumb studs as well, but even so, having handled both, I, I like the build quality on the on the cold steels quite a bit. Um, just a anyway. quick aside. Ahsoka's carrying his Trevor Burger EXK Plus, um, which is... Damn. A chef kiss <laughs> right there. Um, apparently, Ahsoka's not much of a front flipper or a flipper fidgety guy. You know, a fidgety guy. Like, yeah, yeah, but in, in Trevor Berger, as soon as he's dream dropping shit like that, you're just like, oh, you win, sir. You win. Oh, he's yeah. all right. He's like, Jesus. Quite the exception with this one, as far as uh, its fidget factor. Yeah. And oddly enough, Miss our uh, Ahsoka Edge is actually the next um, answer. So there's that. Um, apparently... Um, judgmental Joe face has entered the chat, so that's already happened. Uh-huh. I would say take a drink, but I'm almost done with my beer already. Well, here, I'll I'll drink. 
<laughs> yep. Um, I think that'll need to be a t-shirt or something. Don't put my face on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna happen there. <laughs> <laughs> my face, but with that quote, don't put my face on a shirt. <laughs> Terrible. And on the back, just done and done. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, um, oh, Ahsoka's terrible. answer, actually, oddly enough, was the PM2. Hey! <laughs> Indeed. Um, Zinx is saying, do it, all with a bunch of exclamation points. Patreon-exclusive merch. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too no. good. Nobody deserves to have me plastered on their clothing. Come on. If we have the like the uh, stars behind him and just take like that freeze frame and just take that picture, put that on the shirt that says don't don't put a picture with my face on it and sell that, it would be fantastic. It would be absolutely fantastic. That's terrible. <laughs> that's that's awful. <laughs> Joe, apparently people want that more than they want a um uh, what's it called? Cold Steel Spartan? That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we we were trying to find new ways to uh, you know hype up our Patreon a little bit. It's, yeah. Uh, we're yep. open to suggestions, right? We're so, slapping your face on, the, on a T-shirt. No. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like maple syrup. Oh, if you could do that, that would be so great. Make a maple seat. C- Maple shirt, scratch and sniff t shirt. There's so much wrong with that. <laughs> I'm saying we could sell it to the Americans like crazy, like hotcakes. So, does it with smell maple syrup on them? Does it smell like maple syrup until you wash it the first time? After that, what it just smells like whatever detergent you use. <laughs> like, and no, it's a combination syrup. of the detergent and maple syrup, obviously. It fades <laughs> over time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the third version of the shirt is Joe's face with Pisana on it and zero context. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Oh. King of the Pisana. <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> I don't blame you. you. You really shouldn't. Oh, no. That, that was a Mr. Fisk comment. And oddly enough, he's actually the next person that... Uh, <laughs> Um, had a response this week. So uh, he said not the Sebenza 21, which is the exact opposite of what we were looking for. Super helpful, bud. <laughs> like, he could have said the the Sebenza 31. Okay, well, let's at least discuss it for a second, because the Sebenza is, like, often people's first grails when they get into collecting knives and some people are disappointed by them and others people uh, other people are fine with it i happen to like mine quite a bit but like what do you what do you guys think <laughs> i Nothing? have one no? on order <laughs> okay well <laughs> you guys i know what you think i know you like it and uh, i know you've said time and time again you don't feel like you've really started I collecting i understand why people I understand why people would think it's overrated. Titanium yeah. slabs that aren't contoured or rounded or anything, and they bling it out with two gram- blue pieces of and S35. I can buy that for 180 bucks on a Chinese market, right? No, so I, why I am I... Let's go ahead. I think it's a time timeline sort of thing. Like, it's... The, the peak and crest of it is gone as far as the pristine and the exclusivity of the materials and the machining and stuff like that. But as technology has progressed, more production companies are doing stuff like that. They've stayed in level and things have gone past them and they're kind of waning out now as far as the, the pedestal that they're on. Right. Is and that just kind of sinking? As far as their, as far as like you can, and their quality mm. and everything else, they're still there. But I yeah. agree with you, Nigel, that everybody is creeping up on them. And S35, that used to be really impressive, is something that you can get for... Mm-hmm. And like how Dennis was mentioning, you get the titanium slabs and the S35 for like 150 200 bucks. So it's like their their pedestal slowly sinking. Um, yeah, exactly. 100%. I bring up the Rhino yeah. because it's actually slightly less money 
than a Semenza is. And it's mm-hmm. titanium with rounding and machining with pivot collars and M390 and ball bearings. And you're paying slightly less money and precision. It yep. was no wee knife Pleroma that I had to send back twice. That's for me. Sure. <laughs> so like, <laughs> so like <laughs> 15, so like 15 years ago when there was nothing else like that on the market. Yes, they were worth that hype. But now that there's other competitors on the market, it's yeah, they're, not not worth it as much anymore i don't think i gotta agree thinking about i mean as much as i like my sabenza voking knives like dennis said like m390 titanium ball bearings precision machining and really clean machining i don't know about consistency from model to model because i've only ever held the one but you can get you can get a lot for your dollar these days i think the only way that chris reeve is really competitive at this point it's uh, leaning on the name a little bit. Oh, it's reputation for sure. Yeah. It's reputation, mm-hmm. and not and to say established it. So yeah, and not to say Just that the very, very quick aside. What's going on, Ben? What are you carrying tonight? Hey, Ben. How's it going? <clears throat> Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. That's no, all good. I was just not the not that the Sabenza isn't a very well designed knife. I think it is. It's very comfortable in hand. The blade cuts extremely well, given how thin the blade is. Um, but you don't get a stainless steel lock insert. Well, I guess on the new ones, you're getting a ceramic ball bearing insert. You're getting some new features, but they're still using S35 at that price point. Like, I don't know. They're, they're on, s- on not a, and not a state-of-the-art science heat treatment either. Yeah. It's still just kind of a middle-of-the-road generic, Me, Like, yeah, like, they're not pushing the envelope. Is yeah. it, what, 50 like, to 60? Uh, fifty. 59. I think I think it's fifty nine to sixty one. I think is the new updated heat treat regimen because they did change it. Mine it mm-hmm. mine is actually sitting at like fifty nine. I think, but okay. uh, because because before it was a fifty eight to fifty nine. Now I think it's a fifty nine to sixty one or a or a sixty to sixty one. I thought it. Was, I still thought it was like fifty eight fifty nine myself. Uh, I'm pretty sure that changed. I'm pretty sure the new heat treat regimen calls for a little bit harder. And, but that didn't happen until Chris Reeve uh, left the scene, so to speak. Like, left the scene. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I had heard that it was going to start getting harder in the next year, or the last year or so, but I hadn't noticed if that happened yet. Fair enough. I don't have any sources to cite in this particular instance. Yeah. I just I seem to recall that they had already made that change. Um, ben is carrying a Kershaw scallion and his grandpa's Sabre 644. Cool. Um, what I was going to say is one thing that I would like to see added to more birth certificates for like those high end knives. I would love if it like, like told you attested this Rockwell is X. Mm-hmm. And they outright told you exactly, they had tested that one. I could tell you exactly what that one was. Kind of Puma style from back in the day. Where yeah. Got yeah. Wasn't yeah. it, uh, I wanted to say Brown, Brown Knives was doing that for a bit. Oh, okay. Brown Knives. <laughs> Don't you know Brown Knives? You, you should know who Brown Knives is. Jesus Christ, guys. Uh, excellent machining. Like I would put them on par with like Grimsmos and and uh, Holtz and stuff like that. Um, I seem to remember his stuff being uh, being uh, tested, like each individual blade being tested. Where where is he based out of? American? Oh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the states. Um, this is his symbol, at least, if that brings any bells for you, but. He's only he's got these two models in production. I'd love the fact that it's just the most generic name for a company, and then his logo is just the most generic <laughs> piece of the words. Here you go. Yeah. And then and then the knives look... understated about it. I'm I'm not shitting on it, but and then the knives look like he stole the designs from Rake. So... <laughs> Oof. Oof. Um, well, the Jesus. knife was <laughs> They started. I saw it in a Zoom chat through a cell phone. What do you expect my reaction to be? That's one. That's from, fair. Uh, that's fair. That's a spec. Actually, that box yeah. looks familiar. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's the servo. Oh. Uh, okay, my yeah, mistake because it's not listed as given the a hardness. Exponent. 
Anyways, yeah. the Knife Whisperer is saying that he's carrying the Riot Iron and what's good, boys? What's going on, brother? Yeah. Um, I've been holding off on this comment because I was kind of waiting where we were going up talking about Sabenzas. Um, but Mr. Fisk was so polite in chat to raise his hand and say that he had an opinion. <laughs> um, how many Kaparas, bug outs, broken skulls, Penya rhinos, Kaiser Geminis are going to be relevant in 10 years? Are you going to pass a shaman to your kid? And to be honest, if I had a shaman that was like pimped out, it's a great knife no. to pass on to any kid. Yeah, but I'm also going to, as far as like the revelancy in 10 years, I'm going to point out the Kenan and Kershaw stuff, the speed safe system, as far mm -hmm. as the name on the map, that's still going to be relevant. Um, the PM2s are definitely going to be relevant. Um, I don't know about bug outs. Yeah, that's going to be probably I don't, going. I don't know if this knife is going to be relevant. Yeah. But... No, it's going to be relevant. Screw you. <laughs> it's relevant to me, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Ten years from now, I'll be bragging that my Pena Rhino is still nicer than a Savannah. <laughs> ten, ten years ago. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. I don't know if it's even ten years old, but people still talk about things like the Kershaw Ram and the Tilt and these older uh, models. The ET. Yeah, yeah. But he's got a good point. He's got a good point. Yeah. That they're like, especially like he calls out the Kaiser Gemini and things like that. Like these titanium S35, M390, yeah. like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. The like precision machining is going to be just on par with the Sabenza, but they're gonna rise and fall and fade and whatever. And the Sabenza yeah. will still have the Chris Reeve rep reputation. Yeah. <laughs> and there's other things that'll have that reputation too. But he's got a point for sure. I, I don't think he's saying they're more relevant, Mr. Fisk. I think he's saying that the Slizz Bowie and the Rhino are just as well made. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. He's just, yeah, like I said, a decade from now, how many people are going to be talking about those and how many people are going to be talking about Sabenza? Yeah. Because I think yeah, Sabenza has proven that it's going to stand the test of time. It's, it's like, like a buck one. And as far as ten, putting... There's still this day, right? The, the history, right? Like, sorry, and as far as the sorry. possibility of uh, passing down to your kids and whatnot, I would definitely put the Pena Rhino in that category. Oh, yeah. is, the only reason I wouldn't put that one in the ball bearings. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know about the longevity of ball bearings over time. We, it's a yeah, new yeah. enough thing in the industry that we don't know how they're going to perform 40 years down the road yeah, yeah. or whatever it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking as far as like our current time frame, the price point and the competitive as far as what's on the market in comparison to the Sabenza. Mm -hmm. I could see that being in the same sort of category as being a possible to pass down. And it may not be relevant 10 years from now, but if I don't get a knife nicer than my Anthem, the Anthem would get passed out to any kid yeah. or, you know what I mean? Easily. Yeah. I just, I guess the sheer ubiquitousness, the, the market permeation of a Sabenza is so much larger than so many other knives that are similar. Like, there's this huge built history for Chris Reeve knives and there's guys who just have thousands upon thousands of dollars, <laughs> Mr. Fisk in their collection. And it all just makes up Sabenzas mm -hmm. like the relevancy there. Yeah. It's a, especially since they're all American made too. It's a little hard to, yeah. to compare them for sure. And I don't think the relevancy or relevancy will ever actually go away with the, with the Chris Reeves knife just because of, the innovations within the knife world he done, like the titanium framework. Yeah. Like Crucible's with... evolution of all of their steels being based off of like it's yeah, yeah. 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 So just for what he's done for the knife world and the progression of knives in general, yeah, the, he will never lose his relevancy. Mm -hmm. Indeed. A very quick aside, Mr. Fisk is also saying that his JG Ranger um, came with document documentation from Bowler. Um, where it had been tested for its uh, Rockwell, which is very, cool. very, very cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. What I'm saying. Like, that's the kind of thing that I like seeing. Um, Ahsoka Edge is also saying in chat that uh, the thing you need to understand about Chris Reeves, Striders, Hinderers, and those higher end production knives is they have, because they have been around for so long, that fan base is built in. There's mm. always going to be people that want one of those knives. And you're always going to mm. probably keep catching new people because they're everyone's probably got one in their like 
friend group. If you're into knives, you probably know somebody that has one or you're a friend of a friend of a guy has one. And the first time you play with something that nice and you're like, oh, how much is this? Because you don't know the knife world and you're expecting the guy to say like a couple hundred bucks or something like that type of thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, I paid twelve hundred for the Strider or whatever it is. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, yeah, it leaves an impression in someone who's new in the knife world being like, what? You paid what for what type of like, yeah, Yeah. which is common to see sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just a super brief note about the fact that they're still using S35 for blade steels. Uh, we're all steel snobs. We all like high-end stuff. I mean, wear resistance is usually the bee's knees, I think, for all four of us in most cases. But at the end of the day, S35 is a perfectly functional steel. It's going to do what you're going to need to do throughout a day. Uh, it's a, It's just a good steel. As far as it being useful 10 years from now compared to new steels that, are, that might be around, Hard to say. Uh, Crucible seems to be coming out with a new steel every year now. At least one new steel every year. So development happens quick. Yeah. And to be honest, kind of sometimes when things change, the more they stay the same. There's a lot of comparisons you can make between new steels that are on the market. And it's, they took this steel and they changed the ratio of this and this. And now it's a new steel. Yeah. But they, they started with a base of x y or z you know what i mean yeah justin also kind of makes a good point that these sabenzas have stayed popular because they're kind of boring looking and that single single finger choil straight handled knife is something that fits so many people it's the keanu reese of knives (laughs) some might say boring some might say classic i I mean you're not wrong Um, it's getting kind of late. We should probably go on our first break. That we should. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what time this all started. It's it was the first half was a blur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right be, answer. We can go hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely break time. So yeah, I'm uh, gonna head off on break here. Uh, gonna remind everyone out there in the realm of YouTube land to make sure that you'd like this video. If not, you will be cursed to forever put the USB port in the wrong way. It will never fit the right way for you. So like the video. USB-C denies you. Yeah. That's a a nasty-ass curse. (laughs) Indeed it is. So like the video. And with that, we will be back shortly. (laughs) Indeed.